right, everybody, welcome back. So what we're going to be really discussing is our self-esteem, what we think about ourselves, how others think, how we think others think that we look, and really how these perceptions are constructed in childhood can actually impact how we show up in the world, how we show up in the bedroom, how we show up with our partners, how we show up at work, right? So it actually has a larger impact than just the intimacy levels. Your concept of how you look in your body affects your self-esteem, your confidence levels, how you hold yourself in space, the amount of space you take up around you, right? How you give yourself permission to be. So your self-image can do everything from, be everything from your physical appearance, right? How you see your body, but it's also more than just your body. It's how you feel, how you look, what kind of person you think you are, what you think others think of you, how capable you feel you are, how much you can ask for what you want, how much you ask for what you need, your ability to take risks, your ability to challenge yourself, really, and how deserving you feel about having a really passionate and powerful sexual relationship in your life. Because a lot of our concept of self begins in childhood where we are either taught that we're not good enough or that we should be a little bit different or be more fun or be more playful or stop being so talkative or you can do better at this, right? There's there's this underlying sense of pressure, but also even if it wasn't directed directly at us, all of this impacts our ability to feel deserving. It can directly affect our desire, our ability to give and receive love, especially physically, right? And when it's physical, it can also be sexual part. So if you were right now to look in the mirror naked, what would you think about yourself? What words come into your mind? Where do your eyes go on your body in the mirror? Over 35,000 women that were comfortable with their bodies were more likely to engage in more frequent sexual activity, had more orgasms, and were more likely to initiate sex. They are more willing to put themselves out there. They're more willing to enjoy the pleasure, enjoy the experience. So the more that you know about your own body and your partner's body, the greater the opportunity is for fantastic sex. So a lot of people find this counterintuitive because sometimes we're taught that sex should be like in the dark, and mysterious and hidden and, and all of these things, right? So my goal with this is not necessarily to have you become a narcissist and just, you know, be all over everything. Narcissism, narcissist is actually a Greek Roman hero, right? He shunned sex and eventually died because he became so enamored with his reflection that he couldn't move away from the pond. A lot of people pleasers come from this model of upbringing where they were loved for what they did, where they were loved for how they looked, but not for who they really are. So then as adults, some don't even know how to love themselves for who they are. They don't even know what that is, what that looks like, what they feels like, right? Which also impacts your ability to love and your ability to have unconditional love both for yourself and others. So your sense of self-worth, your self-esteem is rooted on how you feel about yourself. And it is reflected in how you interact with others in ways that most of us aren't even aware of. Thanks for watching. And if you're really interested in feeling good about your body, feeling passionate about your partner and learning more, check out the website below on the Path to Passion class. I look forward to hearing about your questions, your ahas. Please subscribe and we'll see you soon. Remember, you are loved, you are loving, and you are lovable.